Everybody remember Pepe? Say hi to Pepe. Pepe. Pepe's been our friend over the last seven weeks. I have been asked probably a dozen times today, is today the last week with Pepe? And the answer is yes, but tonight we will be auctioning off Pepe. So, uh, just kidding. But uh, today is the last Sunday for Pepe, and I just want to remind you, I want to read this, I want to remind you uh, that this is who you are. You are a sheep in need of a shepherd. And I hope that you've been encouraged. I hope you've been challenged. And today, before I read the scripture and pray, I, I wanna pastor you, is that okay? Uh, today, I wanna do less preaching and I just wanna pastor you. I wanna pastor your heart. Um, so less, yay, and more have you thought about. You thought about this. You let this marinate in your spirit. And I just believe God's gonna speak to you. Are you ready? Let's stand and we'll read uh, Uh, Psalm 23, one more time, with Pepe in hand. This is a sad moment, the last time we read it together. I wanna read it out of a brand new passage of scripture. Uh, This is the uh, New American Standard Version, the 1995 version. I love it because of the way the last verse is. Uh, And so let's read it together. Read it out loud with me. Ready, one, two, three. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. Verse five, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. You've anointed my head with oil, my cup. Now hold on real quick. This is where we're going today. Verse six, I'm gonna lean in on this today. Verse six, ready, one, two, three. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen? Forever, forever, and forever. Now before you're seated, I wanna just re, I wanna recap this real quick, okay? Before you're seated, just, let's just be reminded today as we recap seven verses, seven weeks. The Lord is what? He's your shepherd. The Lord wants to guide you. He's your shepherd. He leads me beside what? Green pastures. Remember week number two, what did we say? That it is God who creates the environment for you to have rest. There is no green in the Negev Valley. The only place that is green is the place that the shepherd makes green. And I'm here to tell you, in this world, there is no green. The only place that's green is the area that you allow the good shepherd in. He leads you beside quiet waters. What did we say? There are three ways, three waters that the shepherd leads the sheep to. Number one, we said that he leads you to these deep wells, those discouraging, defeated places in your life. He leads you to the streams that you go to with your community. But there's something about that daily due nourishment that the shepherd leads the sheep to. He restores my soul. Remember week number three, we said sometimes in life, your world gets upside down. It's a C word, what did we say? We said it's cast. And when your life is upside down and it's cast, it is the good shepherd that restores your soul. Week four, we said that you've been heading in some wrong directions, but be reminded that the good shepherd wants to lead you on the right path. And last week, we said that most of us want to move from mountaintop to mountaintop. But in order for you to go from this mountaintop to that mountaintop, you must go into what? The the valley. But it's in the valley where growth happens. It's it's in the valley where truth happens. It's in the valley where your character becomes a reality. It's in the valley where you grow. You don't grow on the mountaintop, you grow in the valley. Wish I had time to preach verse six, verse five. This oil is a soothing mechanism and then today I wanna verse by verse, word by word, pastor you around surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Father, our hearts are open. We've read your word. Father, I ask that you would anoint your word. Anoint it. 
I pray that you would put salt and pepper, you would anoint it, you would put flavor to the reading of your word, God. I pray that it would minister, that it would be salve to those that are wounded. It would be uh, salt for those that need flavor. It would be healing for those that need restoration. That you would do what only you can do by the reading of your word today. Anoint it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 You may be seated. As I said to you, as we kind of end the next the last seven weeks, I want to pastor your heart today. I want to minister to you the few minutes that I have with you. Throughout Psalm 23, if you've got notes, write this down. Throughout Psalm 23, David, the author of Psalm 23, he is revealing the personal and close relationship that David has with the Good Shepherd. It's six short verses. But let me remind you, the word me is mentioned six times. The word I is mentioned four times. And the word my is mentioned seven times. There are 17 personal references in these short six verses. This song of trust, this self-disclosing character recognition that David is having on the hillside of the Negev Valley. As he's looking into the valley, he's reminding himself that God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit want a personal, intimate, close relationship with David. Now, before we go any further, let me help you be grafted into this story that this same relationship that God is having with David and David is having with God is the very same relationship that God wants to have with you, that the Son wants to have with you, and that the Holy Spirit wants to empower you to have with him. You see, we expect this emphasis as we read Psalm 23 because how many of you know today, walking with the Lord involves faith. First and foremost, it reminds us that in order for you to have faith, you must walk close in fellowship with the one you have faith in. That I can analyze the chair, I can make sure the screws are in it, the top is on it, I can do everything I need to trust the chair, but how many of you know at some point I just got to sit in the chair to trust it? See, David is reminding us that true spirituality is not about these empty emotions or this life of religion or this feelings of lostness not mere external activities, and it's not long-lasting rituals. David is ending this incredible passage of Scripture telling us that God wants to know David, and David wants to know God, that David is reminding himself that I need an intimate relationship with the Father, an intimate relationship with the Son, and I need personal communion with the Holy Spirit. 17. Personal references. It makes it personal. We've often said that this, this is a Bible, this is the love letter of the God of the universe to the broken, sinful man. God didn't wait for us to get right with him. He came and made right with us. It's the greatest love story ever written. He didn't wait for us to love him enough or to ask for forgiveness enough. He didn't ask for us to be, wait for us to invite him into our life. He came and made right what was wrong. It's a love story, but how many know it's a personal love story? So we know that he's the good shepherd. He leads us to green pastures, to still waters, to the right path. We go in the valley. He anoints our head with oil. And although there is enemy, we can get through it because the crescendo, the closing crescendo of Psalm 23 ends this way. Surely, goodness 
and loving kindness will follow me all of the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now let me understand, let me help you understand what is theologically happening right here. David is pinning these words on the hillside of the Negev Valley. He looks up after verse number five. He sees up into the heaven and he gives us a different picture in verse six. And the picture that he gives us is of himself. And he is a special guest in the grand banquet hall where there is a feast being served. But it is no longer David serving somebody, but now the Lord Jesus Christ is serving David at this grand banquet hall. However, this dining hall is not some worldly royal palace merely for those who don't live eternally, but no, he is giving us a picture of this eternal dwelling place of highest nobility, and he calls it, what? The house of the Lord. The house of the Lord. That no matter wrong path I go to, no matter how long I spend in the valley, no matter how many times I go to the still waters or d- decide to, to humble myself to the green pastures or no matter how many times I get off track and he pulls me back in and I get stubborn and then he has to take the rod and break my leg, no matter how many times he looks up on verse six and he says, but even though all of this I've just said I want to end by looking up into the heavens and reminding myself, surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life. And I, you, will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So here's what I want to do. I don't normally preach this way. This is a little bit different. I want to go professor and pastor today. Less preacher, more professor and pastor. I don't want to just thought by thought give you this. I want to word by word give you exactly what David meant in the original Hebrew when he said these 21 words. Can I show you? The first word he says this, surely, surely. David begins the crescendo, the closing crescendo of Psalm 23 with this emphatic word called surely. The word surely means ak, a.k.a. ak. And it can be translated indeed, absolutely, beyond any doubt, or even only. David is getting ready to tell us, there is no doubt in my mind after going through everything that I've gone through, battling the way that I've battled, hurting the way that I've hurt, dealing with the anguish the way that I've I've dealt with anguish, there is no doubt in my mind about what I'm getting ready to tell you next. He says, because of my life and dependence on the good shepherd, I am deeply persuaded and I can affirm to you today, I will not doubt, I do not doubt, I am confident in this very thing. He's gonna tell us. Now, he wants you and I as readers 2,000 years later to know this, that you can have the same confidence. Surely, indeed, absolutely, beyond any doubt, or even only, I am confident about what I'm getting ready to tell you. It's bold. He's standing firm. He's not swaying. He's not wondering. He's not confused. He is standing strong on what he's getting ready to say. And then he gives us these few words. He says, surely goodness. Now, that word goodness is the Hebrew word lob, L-O-B. And it means this, abundant blessing and lavish benefits God has bestowed on me. It's these blessings, this lavish benefits, and it is God who has bestowed on me. You could summarize it this way, spiritual prosperity. I am confident, yes, because of what I experienced, but because my dependence on God, I am confident that everything that is needed for my life, God is Jehovah Jireh, and it is God who will provide for me. Surely, I'm confident, indeed, without doubt, 
there is this love, this goodness, this abundant blessing, this spiritual prosperity that no matter where life may take me, I am confident that goodness will be involved. Did you see that? He says, I'm confident spiritual prosperity, goodness, and he uses another word. He says goodness, spiritual prosperity, and then he uses the word loving kindness. Interesting word there. And I loved it out of the New American Standard because it gives us most accurately, because English sometimes doesn't translate it right, but it's really one word. It's not love and kindness. It's both. It's loving kindness. It's the word has said, and it means this. This is the Lord's unconditional, loyal love for David. He says, I have trust that no matter how far I run, no matter how off track I get, no matter how many I run, how far I run off the plan, no matter how much I try to do my own way, that there is this hased, this loving kindness. It comes from the original meaning hasad, and it means to bend, to bow. He says this to his readers today. I am confident that spiritual prosperity and loving kindness, which simply means the abundant blessings and the unconditional love, these are going to be evident in my life. I'm confident Jesus will spiritually provide and I can never outrun his love, good or bad. Confident of that. Surely, goodness and loving kindness. Now, to me, those are great, and that's fantastic. I love the confidence, I love the spiritual prosperity, and I absolutely love that we can't outpace the unconditional love of God. But I think the next three, three words are the most important three words in the entire chapter, entire verse. Because the next three words say this, will follow me. David adds that the Lord's goodness and loving kindness, he doesn't follow it, but it follows him. Oh, you didn't hear me, did you? There are times when you're not thinking about God, you're not working for God, you're not trying to be with God, you're not trying to commune with him, you've forgotten about him, you've gone your own way, and you feel like you're distant from him. What David says is, I know what it's like to murder somebody, I did it. I know what it's like to commit adultery, I did it. I was a pretty screwed up dad for a majority of my life. I know what that feels like. I know what it's like to not raise kids that honor God and honor authority. I know what that's like. I, I've been there, done it. He says, so if you're talking about running from the love of God and the goodness of spiritual prosperity, you're looking at a guy that's done it, but I'm confident today that these two things are what follows me. It means this. It means to pursue after or to chase after or to run after after. Here's what David is saying. He knows that it is God's mercy and God's grace that are in close pursuit of the soul, the character of David. He says, even when I get off a track, even when I get off, even when I go my own way, I can be confident that I can't outrun spiritual prosperity and unconditional love. I am surely confident in that. He says what? Whatever he does, Whatever I go, I will not escape it. These two things, loving kindness and goodness, they will never get away from me and I can never get away from it. Instead, God will always pick up his servant and continue to walk with me. How many of you, you've had some BC days and you're grateful today that it is not you following goodness and loving kindness, but it is loving kindness and goodness following after you. I'm thankful that even when I get a little off track and I fall down or I get a little bit of cast and I'm upside down and my life is twisted all around, I don't have to worry about getting enough grace and enough loving kindness and enough love goodness because if I just look behind me, it's been chasing after me for the last few months. Listen to me, it's been chasing you, it's been chasing you, it's been chasing you. You can't outrun the goodness and loving kindness of the good shepherd. And then he says this, I'm confident spiritual prosperity and unconditional love, 
They are what chase after me. And then he says this. It's not just in a moment. It's not just in the season. It's not just when I'm young or when I'm old. It's not just when I'm married or single or I'm rich or I'm poor. But he says these next line. He says, it, it, these two things, they follow me all the days of my life. Now, let me just zone in on this for just a second. You know what David is saying? David is saying, my devotion fluctuates. My dedication fluctuates. My determination fluctuates. My excitement for the things of God fluctuate. I get really excited during the seven days of prayer and I'm all in, but day eight, eh, they fluctuate. David said, I've done some things I shouldn't. But there are times when my faith is strengthened and there will be some times when my faith subsides. So I want you to be confident today of this very thing, that it is the goodness of God and the loving kindness of God that are strong, and it is the loving kindness and the goodness of God that are steadfast. I want you to know today that God's love for David is not dependent on David's love back for God. Are you hearing me? You don't have to drum up some sort of love. Well, I gotta love him as much as he loves me. That's nowhere in the Bible. Well, I gotta be just as good as he is. That's nowhere in the Bible. David comes to the point at this area of his life. He's a little bit older. I don't know how old he is. The Bible doesn't tell us exactly, but we know he has adult kids. So he's gotta be in his 50s, maybe 60s. We don't know. We just know he's older because he's running from Absalom. So here's what we do know beyond a shot of a doubt. We do know this. He's been through life. His faith is wavered. His faith is subsided. And David comes to the place where he realizes, even when I choose to get my life on track, the goodness and the loving kindness of God are not too far away. See, it is God's goodness and God's loving kindness that never weakens and it never wavers. See, in the midst of these trying times, I'm thankful today that God never goes on sabbatical. God never goes on vacation. God's love and God's goodness are chasing after me, and they are ever strong as they've ever been before. I wish about nine people in church would get a little bit excited about the goodness and the loving kindness of God chasing after you. It's chasing you confident in that be confident in that his goodness his loving kindness it's chasing you you know what that does for me that helps me take a deep breath because there are days where i feel like i'm not very good at this thing called christianity there are some names where i, I go man i've been, it's been three days i've not been in the word it's been three days i've not spent more than three minutes in prayer and i feel like a failure am i preaching to anybody in church and I'm thankful that when, it, when I have that thought, oh my goodness, I need time with Jesus. I just look, oh, there he, there's goodness. There's loving kindness. It's not a mile away. It's not down the street. It's not in the past season. It's not in a past relationship. You just do this. He's right there. He's right there and it's right there. Stepping on your heels saying, let me remind you, goodness, loving kindness, they're gonna follow you no matter what you do. So the moment you choose to get into a relationship with God, you have chosen to have loving kindness and goodness following you. Are you hearing me? And it happens all the days of your life, all the days. Like when your faith is high or when your faith is low, his loving kindness and goodness are following you. Here, here, here's the last few verses. This is the last few words. And David says, here's another one of those 17 personal statements. He says, and I, David says this, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, now I'm not an English teacher, and some of you that are much smarter, nobody corrected me, so maybe I am right, or maybe nobody had the courage to correct me. I'm not sure. Uh, last time I checked, and I could be way off on this, uh, they're changing stuff all the time, but you, you can't start a sentence with the word and. Is that still true today? I'm just gonna go with it, even if it's not true. But what's interesting is David does that. He says, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. See, why I think it starts with and is because it is directly connected to what he already said. So what he's getting ready to say is directly connected with what he already said. They are inseparable. 
Surely goodness and mercy and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. For dwelling in the house of the Lord is directly connected to the pursuit of the goodness and love of God. Are you hearing me? They're connected. They're connected. The word dwell. Here's what the word dwell means. It's the word hasab in Hebrew. And it means to sit down and stay. Now, how many you know somebody feels comfortable in your house when they take off their shoes? Don't you hate it when people like walk around your house with shoes and like, oh, take your shoes off. And they got their personal strapped around their chest. I'm like, bro, where are you going somewhere? Like, what, you, you gotta make a swift exit? And then you know they're real comfortable when their shoes come off and their feet go on the coffee table. <laughs> what God is saying is this, you will dwell, you don't have to use a coaster in my house. What I have is yours and what you have is mine. You're gonna sit down, you're gonna stay. It conveys this idea that the house of God is now my house and my house is now his house. So wherever he goes is my home and wherever I go is his home because wherever we go, we go together because I'm gonna dwell with him forever. I'm in his presence because I'm in a personal relationship with him. I'm gonna dwell together with him. If he's in heaven, I'm in heaven. If he's in hell, I'm in hell. If he's on this earth, I'm on this earth. If he's up in the clouds, I'm on the clouds. I'm just wherever he is because the house of the Lord is actually the presence of Jesus. Got it? And then it ends. It ends with this word because it doesn't say, I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Because how many know you put a period there, it's like, it says this, I will dwell in the house of the Lord, what? Now let me just tell you something. You put forever on anything at the end of the sentence, you better be going confident. If I tell April, I will love you forever, how many of you know that's forever? Or I'm gonna go to the gym every day forever. How many know you put forever on the end of anything, it's like buckle up, bucko. He says this, there's no amount of time and eternity that you will not be in my presence. It is forever. David is reminding his readers today that the relationship we ha he has with the Father is forever. It started, they went through some valleys, they had some ups and downs, but now he's dwelling in the house of the Lord. For, the word forever means this, literally, for the length of days, for prolonged, never-ending days. Once David begins with this relationship with Jesus, he knows this relationship with God will never, ever be severed. David, I'm gonna read this. David wants us to know that the Lord who pursues us with loving kindness is he who keeps us forever and the Lord who is ever chasing us is also the same God who is ever keeping us. It's the whole salvation sanctification. Don't wanna get off subject. So the God who drew you to salvation is the same God who sanctifies you to be like him. One God, once God begins his pursuit of us, he will never let go. No believer can be separated from the love of God, our great shepherd, our host of heaven, and our king of kings. It's God's goodness, it's God's mercy that follows you, but what I think David wants us to know today is this, this forever isn't until you die. This forever is shown to be for all of eternity, longer than you can think. He says, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever, that all the condemnation and destruction that I receive on this planet, they end because I am not submitted to destruction and corruption. I'm actually submitted to the God of the universe who says, I'm gonna dwell in the house. So I pay for my sins this side of eternity but when I get on the other side, I don't have to pay for him anymore because Jesus has paid for him for his blood. What I mean by that is this. You still have the consequences for your sin this side. But once you get on the other side, you riding in glory. Are you following me? He says forever and forever 
and forever I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hey, you just went to seminary for the last 20 minutes. Give yourselves a round of applause for that. <laughs> Verse six, and then I wanna end. I wanna end our series so intentionally. Verse six, surely, goodness, Surely, what's that word mean? Come on, what's it mean? Talk back to me. Confident, indeed. I like, I like no confidence in this. This is happening. Uh, surely, goodness, spiritual prosperity, and loving kindness, the unconditional love. What happens? They will follow me. They're chasing after me. All the days of my life, even when I'm not pursuing it, it is pursuing me. And I have recognized that I don't live on this planet forever, that I'm gonna dwell. Really, the house means the presence of the Lord, and I'm gonna do that forever. So I can trust the good shepherd to lead me to the right path, to the green pastures, to the still waters, into the valley, out of the valley, onto the mountaintop, anoint my head with oil, no matter what enemies come against me. The enemy that was coming against David was Absalom and his men. I don't have to worry about Absalom, my son, and the men because I am, I'm a spiritual being who's gonna dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So here's where I want to end. You are a sheep. Pepe's, this is you. You're a sheep in need of a shepherd. And you are either one of four types of sheep. And I want to end. Keys are gonna come out. I'm gonna end this way. There are four types of sheep, and you're one of them four. We didn't go through the last seven weeks just to teach you. We went through the last seven, eight, seven weeks to challenge you. And I'm gonna hold Pepe, and I'm gonna preach this last moment with Pepe in my hands to remind you that you're a sheep in need of a shepherd. The, the first type of sheep are those who can't hear the good shepherd's voice. You keep coming to sheep to get a word from God. You keep asking other people what God wants you to do. And you're sitting in church this week and you're watching online and you've never heard the voice of God. You've never heard him speak to you. I wanna remind you today, John chapter 10. Jesus answered them, I told you. And you don't believe the works that I do in my Father's name. Listen to this. Those who testify of me, those who believe in me, those who trust me, those that are in a relationship with me, but you do not believe in me because you are not my sheep. Can I just tell you, your shepherd wants to speak to you. And if you've not heard the voice of the good shepherd, maybe because you've not been adopted into the sheep fold. And at the end of this service, God wants you to become a sheep that is in the fold. Here's the second one. It is those who hear the voice, but they don't listen to it. Uh-oh. Those who hear the voice, those who know the voice, those that hear it, but those, they don't want to do anything about it. They're in the fault. They're going to heaven when they die. They trust Jesus for their eternal salvation, but they just don't love God enough to trust them with their temporal circumstances. So these people, they're okay living in their sin. But let me remind you, the same Bible that was written thousands of years ago is the same Bible that's true today. But for some reason, we allow culture to define us instead of the word to define us. We justified our sin. And you hear his voice, but you've just chosen not to believe. You chose to be in lifestyles and belief systems that don't align with God's word. And God is convicting you today. You hear his voice. You know it's wrong. You know you shouldn't be doing that. You know that's not the right environment for you to be in, but you continue to do it. But there is a conviction of the Holy Spirit because you are saved and God is convicting you, but you're allowing the other sheep in the pen to be louder than the voice of God inside of you. John 14, if you love me, what's the Bible say? You will keep my commandments. He is a shepherd who commands to be followed. So I'm just telling you right now, and you can argue this till Jesus comes back, and I'll disagree with you till Jesus comes back, because I'm a knucklehead. This doesn't work a whole lot for me. Can I just be honest with you? 
because I've figured out a way to get out of the staff. Some of you in this room, you've realized the rod is more powerful in your life than the staff. And I've had my leg broke a time or two. Never to make me a bad person, but to remind me of my dependence on Jesus. Some of you in this room today, you've hearing the voice, but you're not allowing the correction of God to come in your life so he can continue to protect you. But there's a third group, and this is a great group. This is a group of people that you listen and you see the good shepherd's loving kindness and goodness in your life. You see it. Now, these sheep aren't perfect. These sheep have got off path. They forgot to go to the quiet waters. They forgot to be led to the green pastures. These sheep have been cast before. They've been upside down, flailing their arms, waiting for somebody to come alongside of them to flip them back over so that their life can be restored. You've been here before, but at the end of the day, you always land back on your feet. Why? Because you believe that the good shepherd's loving kindness and goodness is following you all the days of your life. John 10, 10 says this, that there's a thief who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I, the good shepherd says, I have come I've come to give Pepe's life and life abundantly. I've come to give you the life that you've always wanted. But then there's a fourth group. These are probably the group that I'm most excited about in church today as we end this series. But the fourth group are those, and today you're hearing the voice of God for the very first time. God is speaking to you. Now let me just tell you if you know if you're hearing the voice of God. You've never heard the voice of God. This is what the voice of God will sound like for the very first time. If you've never heard it before, this is what it'll sound like. It will sound like a father drawing you to him. That's what it'll sound like. Hey, son, come on. Hey, daughter, come on. His first voice rarely will sound like this. It will sound more like this. Because grace and truth are important, but his grace is what leads you to truth, not truth to grace. So his grace will lead you in. And if you're hearing God's voice for the very first time, he's drawing you into relationship with him. Receive it. Trust it. Believe it. I love what John 10 says this. My sheep, hey, follower of Christ, my sheep, they hear my voice. There's no denying if they're my sheep. If you you don't hear the voice of God, you may not be his sheep. And I know them, and they follow me. And I've already given them eternal life, and they will never perish, nor will anybody snatch them out of my hand. So today, Pepe's, if you have never heard the voice of God and God is drawing you, he's most likely drawing you into what I'm calling a relationship. Receive it, let him in. Listen, he's your good shepherd. He leads you to green pastures, to still waters. He will always lead you to the right path. He will always lead you through the valley of the shadow of death. But I'm here to tell you, you can be confident. The goodness and loving kindness, they follow you all the days of your eternal life. And you and I, we're gonna dwell in the house of the Lord forever and forever and forever, and nobody can snatch you and I out of the hands of God. Amen. So let me end with this. That's all you need. That's all you need. That's all you need. You just need to be confident that he's following after you. And what you feel unequipped to do, he's already been there, done it, and he's got the t-shirt. Trust him, he's worthy of our trust. Can I pray for you? Would you bow your head and close your eyes, every head bowed and everybody closed with nobody looking around. Father, I just thank you for the goodness of your leading. I thank you for loving us and guiding us. God, I thank you for the correction that you give to us in our life. God, I thank you for, for protecting us. So Father, right now I pray for those that are in this room. In fact, let me just ask you this. How many of you are in this room and you just need to be reminded that God's love, kindness, and protection wanna follow you? 
How many of you in this room just need to be reminded of that today? Would you just lift your hand up? Just say, I just need to be reminded of that today. I'd love to pray for you. Father, I pray for every single person within the sound of my voice. Those that are hurting, those that are little, dealing with a little anguish, a little, little anxiety, a little fear, but need to be reminded that your protection, your guidance is what leads us. So Father, I thank you that you are with us and that you see us. We cannot outrun your love or your prosperity because those are two things that run after us. And so today we say surely over our life, indeed, you will be with us. Now with your head bowed and with your eyes closed and with nobody looking around, maybe you're in this room and you've never given your life to Jesus. You never trusted him as Lord and Savior. The Bible says today is the day of salvation where you get to receive him as Savior. So can I encourage you? In a room that's full of those watching online, if you've never done that before, would you make that decision today by just praying this simple prayer? Just say, Jesus, would you come into my life, heal me, redeem me, be my Savior, my Lord. I trust you. I give you all of my sin, and I receive your salvation. Now, with your head bowed and with your eyes closed, and with nobody looking around, if you prayed that prayer, I'd love to just know who I prayed that prayer with. I won't embarrass you. That's, not, that's not, not how we do around here. I just want to know who I prayed with. So if you're in this room and you prayed that prayer, would you just lift your hand up? One, two, three. Just say, I prayed that prayer, gave my life to Jesus. Real, real tall, just so I can see you. Several over here, one right here. Anybody else? I prayed. Would you just do me a favor if you prayed that prayer? Would you just lift your hand up and look up here at me just so I can see you? Just love to know who I was talking to. Did you guys make that decision, gave your life to Jesus? Awesome. Make that decision, giving your life to Jesus. Made that decision, giving your life to Jesus. Who else am I talking? So proud of you. Right here. You made that decision, ma'am. So proud of you. No longer do you have to wonder. No longer do you have to be confused. No longer do you have to go, did I, did I not? Am I going to heaven? No. Everything is signed, sealed. Your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. You can be confident of that. Anybody else I prayed that prayer with? All right, here's what I want you to do. There was about six of you. You prayed that prayer. Here's what I need you to do. In a moment, we're gonna stand and we're gonna worship. There is a green card, and it says next step on the top. I need all of you to do it, okay? I need you to just take that card. I need you to fill it out and just check, I receive salvation. I prayed the prayer of salvation. And at the end of the service, you're gonna go to the lobby. There's gonna be some people in green shirts. You're gonna take that card and you're gonna give that card to them and say, I prayed that prayer. I gave my life to Jesus. We're not gonna embarrass you, but we've got a gift we wanna give to you and we wanna help you with your next step. Can you do that? Can you do that, all of you? Awesome. Can we, can we stand and give, put a round, our hands together, a round of applause for those that gave their life to Jesus? Yeah, woo! Never gets old. Never gets old, never gets old, never gets old. Never gets old. So we're gonna go into a time of response. We're gonna invite the prayer team up here. And if you need prayer for anything, they're here. If you need to go to the cross, do business with Jesus. If you need to light a candle for somebody who's far from Jesus in your life, come say a prayer for them. If you need to take communion with your spouse, whatever you need, the prayer team is coming, I believe, right now. And they'll be up here. If you need prayer for anything, they would absolutely love to pray for you. Whatever you do, don't walk out. Walk forward. Respond to what Jesus has for you. Amen? Come on, let's sing.